to welcome our presenter, Ms. Siobhan Thomas. She is the coordinator for Prince William um, County Schools Heels and Social and Emotional Learning. Welcome, Ms. Uh, Thomas. We're happy to have you tonight. Good evening. I am happy to be here. I am Vaughn Thomas, and I am, as um, Ms. Boy said, the Social Emotional Learning Coordinator for PWCS Heels. This evening, we are going to talk about um, relationship skills. So I'm going to go ahead and get us started. So as part of social emotional learning, we do something that we um, encourage teachers and, you know, anyone in the school to engage in, which is called an inclusive welcome. What that does is it just provides a space for everyone to come in and be ready to engage, be ready to interact. Um, and, and it also allows people to, to share their voice. So today, um, I would like, if you would like to come off mute, and I want you to just tell us one word that you think of when you hear the word family. Um, it could be your family, it could be a family on TV, it could be a family you know, but just tell us one word um, that you think of, or you can type it in the chat. Um, Mrs. Wines, who is our social emotional learning supervisor, is going to make sure that she records all of those because there's something amazing that we would like you to see at the end of the presentation. So I'm going to give you about 15 seconds to just think of one word when you hear the word family. Warmth. Warmth. Anyone else? And again, if you're not comfortable coming off mute, we welcome you to type your word in the chat. Um, no word is too small. No word is unimportant. Um, you know, whatever word that you can think of is, is going to be correct. For me, All I right. know the, it was only one word, but <laughs> grace and, and support. Grace and support. Uh, hey, we welcome two words. If you can think of two words, Send them <laughs> grace and support. Those are great words. So, so why did so why did I ask you about words? So, what what Miss Wines is doing is she is putting something together. Oh, my little my little screen's not moving. She's putting something together for us called a word cloud. And this is something that as a family, it can be done on paper, it can be done on a poster board, um, an electronic device. As you see on the screen, there are some families that actually create these bigger word clouds as families and they put them up in their home. Um, so it can just be used for something also if you're trying to make a decision or, or where could you go for vacation. Hey guys, let's throw out some words and just put them out there and create your, um, your own word cloud. So this is just something neat, really quickly that you can do. And I am so eager to see what your word cloud looks like um, at the end of the presentation. So for us today, we are actually gonna be following the strategic plan under positive climate and culture, where Prince William County Public Schools will provide a, a learning environment which fosters inclusivity, connectedness and encourages social and emotional wellness for all. Our focus today is to discover relationship skills and why they are important. Um, discuss together and learn from one another, and cr again, creating that safe and supportive learning community and just taking a moment to reflect on our own lives and ways in which we can use it to enhance the support of all family members. Um, our focus learning will be about 50 minutes with about 10 minutes for questions. Um, I just want to remind you that this is supposed to be collaborative, engaging, <laughs> and, uh, and fun. So where do we come from? And for social emotional learning, we have something what is called the castle framework. 
Um, today's focus is on relations, relationship skills. And what are they? Relationship skills is, <clears throat> is knowing how to establish and maintain healthy and supportive relationships, including those with diverse individuals and groups, to communicate clearly, listen actively, cooperate willingly, work collaboratively, and negotiate conflict constructively while acknowledging different social and cultural demands and opportunities. Today, we will look at what relationships look like in the school and also in the home. So what are some key relationship skills? Um, some key relationship skills, the, the first one we think about is communication. Um, communication is the foundation of any healthy relationship. It's not just about talking, but also um, listening actively. When we think about communication, it, we think about expressing our thoughts and our feelings clearly and understanding what we are saying to others and what they are saying to us. But along with communication, there's active listening. The active listening skill helps us understand what someone is saying by giving them our full attention. Um, it could be making eye contact, it can be nodding, um, asking questions, and just showing that we care. Everyone's active listening is different. So for me, I am not an active listener where I can look you straight in the eyes. That makes me nervous. <laughs> so for me, active listening for me looks like nodding. Active listening also for me looks like drawing. Um, a lot of times I am a very, I'm not an auditory um, learner, so I have to always do things with my hands. So for me, I, if I'm in a meeting, sometimes I like to draw. Um, you may notice with your kids when they're talking to you, sometimes they may look up, sometimes they may fidget. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're not active listening, but that's that's the important piece about relationship skills is that you learn what that active listening looks like for different people. Um, another skill that we, you know, we talk to students about is conflict resolution. Conflicts are normal. Um, they happen in any relationship, healthy relationships and even unhealthy relationships. Um, but conflict resolution skills teach us how to handle um, disagreements peacefully and finding solutions that work for both people in um in that in that conflict. Another one that sometimes we forget is empathy. Um, what does that look like? Sometimes empathy means putting ourselves in someone else's shoes. Um, okay, I didn't realize you felt like that, but thank you for letting me know. That's that's empathy. Really just showing um, that we understand their feelings and, and giving them compassion. Even if we don't, it just means taking a step back from, from how it feels to us and, and being empathetic to them. And the last um, key relationship skill that we're discussing today is collaboration. Collaboration is working together. It is important at school and at home. Um, collaboration skills help us achieve common goals and allow us to tackle challenges as a team. You will notice today that we are gonna talk about group things in the building, we're gonna talk about family activities and that relationship skills of collaboration will come into play. So Vaughn, why do I need to know about relationship skills, right? Well, because the Virginia Department of Education tells us and they have these social emotional learning guidance standards. What these are, are standards that tell us, this is where your K through 12 students should be at certain places in their lives. So this isn't something that, I, that we have just decided to say, yep, this is what it looks like. No, actually Virginia Department of Education says, this is what an elementary student K through five, if they have healthy relationship skills, this is what it looks like. If it's a secondary student, this is what it should look like. So I just wanna go through a couple of these. Um, and, and at the end, you'll notice that there is a link with, when Ms. Boyd sends this information to you, there's a link to see the standards. Um, but an elementary student K through five, if they are practicing healthy relationship skills, they should be able to take turns and share. They should also be able to use compliments to encourage others. 
This is easy. Can I play with your toy? Yes, you can. No, I don't want to play with, I don't want you to play with it right now because I'm playing with it. Can I give it to you in five minutes? That is a healthy relationship skill, right? Um, brainstorming ways to tell someone if their words or actions are hurtful. You know, we see a lot of this where sometimes students will retreat back. A healthy relationship skill is able to say, that hurt my feelings. Um, a kindergartner may be able to say, that hurt my feelings and may not be able to tell you why. That's okay. Because that's what that gray band says. But a fifth grader may be able to say, you hurt my feelings because you said. So you'll notice that each gray band, it, it increases just a little bit where we want the students to be able to find that agency within their own. Um, the ability to apply active li listening skills in different situations. Active listening looks very different in class than it would look like in PE. So are they able to apply that skill in different you know, areas of the building? Um, can they communicate their needs and wants um, positively? Of course, that means we're not throwing tantrums. We're able to say, I am hungry. I am this. Um, demonstrating positive verbal and nonverbal communication. So then if we look at secondary, they're the same relationship skills, but they're just expanded a little bit. So a secondary student should be able to independently perform different roles within a group setting. They should be able to now not only demonstrate that positive verbal and nonverbal communication, but they should be able to recognize it and improve their listening skills when it comes to others. Um, they should be able to use conflict resolution, resolution skills to solve problems peacefully. This is an easy one. We are not getting along. You know what? Instead of us fighting in the hallway, let's go see the school counselor. That's a conflict resolution skill. Demonstrating how positive communication skills build and maintain healthy relationships and understanding and identifying ways to navigate unhealthy relationships. Again, as a kindergartner or as a fifth grader, they don't know how to, to navigate an unhealthy relationship, but as a 12th grader, they should be. So these are just a few of the Virginia Department of Education social emotional learning standards for relationship skills. There are so many more that I would just encourage you to, you know, kind of look at to see what it, it would look like for your student. Again, students are going to be a different, they're a different path. So this is just a couple. Um, right now, we are going to watch a video that talks about um, relationship skills. While you're watching the video, I really want you to think about your student. And I want you to think about the emotions you may feel while you're watching. So think about your student and what emotions, what emotions does this video bring up for you? They may not bring any. If you're able, just write them down, put them to the side. Um, it's more so for you just to think about what relationship skills mean to you. And here we go. Let's hope this plays. A child's future ability to it? succeed in the workplace, become a leader, and achieve long-term happiness will depend in no small part on their ability to build positive relationships. Students who learn to communicate clearly, cooperate with others, and constructively negotiate conflict are well on their way to future success. We've talked about self-awareness, which is understanding yourself, and then social awareness, understanding others. So getting into relationship skills is really then, okay, now you're interacting. I'm not just standing over here thinking, I wonder what you're feeling. I wonder what you're thinking. I'm actually using that information to engage. In the classroom, there are lots of opportunities for kids to work together in pairs, to work in small groups, to work in large groups so that they can actually practice this. So we can intentionally teach them explicitly, how do you disagree? How do you agree? How do you be respectful in giving your opinion? How do you take on an active role on a group project? So sometimes before you actually engage kids with a group, you talk a little bit about what are you going to do if one person is doing more than their share of work? 
How are you going to respond when one person doesn't seem to be contributing? What are the different roles that we have as part of this group? Who's going to be taking notes? Who's going to be making sure we stay on task? Who's going to be keeping time? Who's going to make sure that the conversation keeps moving? So we can actually teach kids how to be productive members of a group and give them lots of opportunities in every class to work in groups. You probably heard quite often the idea of project-based learning or problem-based learning. And so that's not just your typical project, we're gonna build something together. It's actually thinking about, okay, let's take our learning and apply it to real world problem. And then as a group, we're gonna solve that. And it's a wonderful way because kids are learning content, they're learning standards, but they're also learning relationship skills. How do we work together? How do we decide who does what role? How do we figure out when we're successful? What if we make a mistake? What if we don't agree with someone? How do we navigate that? It's important to build relationship skills with your children um, because it does foster trust. When kids feel that they can come to you and they could talk to you about anything, um, you know, they're less likely to go to their peers and get the wrong answer sometimes. But it's important to play games with your children. I think sometimes as parents, we get so focused on the day-to-day -day tasks that we forget to have fun. For example, it can be reading a book or watching certain TV programs or going to the movies or going bowling, things that bring you together and bring you out of your comfort zone. I think sometimes it's easy to just kind of fall into a routine in the system and just think, hey, we're together and that's okay. But it's important to spend time and be very um, specific about how you spend time so that that time allows for communication. We want to have healthy relationships with our partners, with our children, with our friends. We know that a social network and positive relationships helps us mitigate against stress, against illness. It increases our longevity. Positive relationship skills are critically important. Okay, so now we're going to take a moment to build a connection. So when you think about the importance of relationship skills, and remember, I asked you to just jot down two things, right? I'm going to ask two questions. The first question is, did anyone take away anything from that video that was an aha moment? Like, oh, maybe I didn't think that was building relationship skills, or I never thought about that. Does anyone have an aha moment from that video? If you do, I will invite you to either come off mute and share, or you can type it in the chat. No? Okay. Here's my second question. And this one I'm going to ask that you write, or not you, that you write, from um, one to five, think about how you feel about your relationship with your student school. With one being, I feel like I don't have a good relationship with my child's school. And five being, I feel like I have a great relationship with my school. Put it in the chat, please. Okay. All right. Okay. Love the fives. Yeah, so one, I feel like I'm, I don't have a good relationship with my child's school or my student's school. Five being, oh, we even have some sixes. That's great. Five being, we have an awesome relationship. Okay. Thank you all so much for putting yourself out there and, and sharing. Sometimes that can be difficult. And, you know, I appreciate those of you who did. And I even appreciate those of you who were like, no, thank you. But you thought about <laughs> what you thought about what it was. So with that being said, let's talk about developing relationship school skills in the school. So here are just a few ways that we can develop relationship skills with our student schools and, you know, sometimes and even also in our home. 
So open communication, having open communication with the teachers, the, the counselors, anyone in the school building, admin, is initiating regular communication with teachers, whether it's via email, school status, phone calls, in-person meetings, just initiating some type of regular communication. Um, and also a, a big one that I think a lot of parents, even myself as a parent, forget is sharing relevant information about your child's interests, strengths, and challenges. You know, as a previous teacher, I loved when parents would say, hey, my kid has a basketball game this weekend. That is his favorite sport. Do you think maybe you could attend one game? Absolutely. Because that is important to my parent and that is important to my student. So sharing relevant information about your child, um, their interests and strengths and challenges just builds open communication between you and the school. Um, part, attending parent-teacher conferences, participating in parent-teacher conferences to discuss your child's progress, strengths, and areas of needs of improvement. Even if the teacher hasn't said, I need to con I need a conference with you, it's okay to initiate that. You know, it's okay for you to say, I want to know how my child is doing. Um, I know we have the uh, main student view and parent view and things like that, but it's okay for you to initiate those parent-teacher conferences first. Um, making sure that you are prepared with questions and concerns that you have. Again, this is your student. It's okay to ask, right? If the teacher doesn't know that you have concerns, how do we address them? Um, another big one is volunteering or participating. Just offering to volunteer in the classroom or even at school events. It just demonstrates your support for the school and the community. Um, I will use myself as an example. It is very difficult sometimes for me to get to my, my students' schools just because of my work schedule. So volunteering for me may be hey, we're going to have an event. Is it possible that I can send something to the PTO? You know, can I donate cookies? Volunteering sometimes for some parents may not look like being in the building. It could be, hey, I can't make it, but I, I would be happy to, to print the flyers off for the building. Sometimes it doesn't necessarily mean being in the building. It could just be supporting. Volunteering or participating could also be you sharing the word. Hey, neighbor, I know that they're having a multicultural event at so-and-so elementary. Would you like to attend? So again, those are ways that you participate <laughs> that you don't even have to move to participate. Um, so with that saying, attending school functions, um, any, any activity that involves a parent such as a fundraiser or workshops or anything like that allow you to be able to have, again, building those relationship skills with your schools. Um, respect and appreciation. Sometimes a simple thank you goes a long way. Hey, thank you for sending that homework. Thank you for replying to my email, right? These are easy ways that the school and you as parents or caregivers can keep those lines of communication, um, can keep those lines of communication open. Um, working collaboratively on solutions for your students. This just means, you know, any academic concerns, any behavioral concerns or social concerns that you or the teacher may have working together um, to, to talk about those. And also sometimes for parents, our caregivers, that also means that we have to be open to implementing strategies or recommendations suggested by the teacher to support our child develop, our children's development. Sometimes we don't like the recommendations. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, sometimes I don't like the recommendations, but I also know that my child is with that, that teacher for six hours of the day, right? And that may not be my expertise. So just also being open. It doesn't mean that you have to agree, but just being open. Um, staying informed, staying informed about school policies, staying informed about events, um, academic expectations. You know, if your school sends a newsletter home, you know, make sure you're reading it, you know, checking the school website, you know, attending any meetings, you know, if they have them, you know, just making sure that you're able to stay informed of what's happening at the school. Um, 
knowing what's happening with your child's academic process is very important. I know, you know, a lot of times we, as parents and caregivers, we think, okay, elementary is easy. Stay on top of it, elementary, middle, and, and high. You know, just making sure that you know what's happening with the academic progress of, of your student. And lastly, following up. Following up with discussions, action plans, meetings, anything that's established during um, meetings with teachers or, or any anything that you go through ensures effective communication. Being able to provide feedback also to teachers about what your child experiences at home and even what they're experiencing, you know, in that in the school building. Um, just just knowing that building positive relationships between between the parents and the caregivers and the school, it it contributes to a supportive learning environment for both. Um, it really is a two way street, and if anyone benefits from it the most, it's definitely going to be your student. Does anyone have any questions just about developing relationship skills with the schools? Hey, Vaughn, I don't have a question, but I do just want to say this. I think it's really important for you to remember that you are the expert on your children. And so we want to always hear what's happening with your children, things that are um, maybe working for you at home with your with your student. And so when we are building those relationships, just making sure that, um, you know, you 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 remember, we, you are the expert on your child, um, and it works best when we collaborate together to figure out those solutions. Um, and sometimes it's really, it can be awkward, um, it can be tough. So we appreciate, you know, when when we have families that are vulnerable enough with us to really share some of those expertise, um, those little notions that they know best about their children. And it looks like Holly has her hand raised. So I'm going to let Holly, you can come off mute and and share whatever it is that you have to share. What I want, what I want to ask is, how could you, if you like, if you like have someone who doesn't like you that much, and you want to stop being enemies with them, how could you like make, how could you make like a bond so they wouldn't hate you anymore? Oh. I love that question. So I have two things. I, first of all, thank you so much for sharing. I think that is the best question I have ever received in any session. Um, so what do you do, right? My first suggestion to you would be to go to your school counselor the, in, in your building, right? And if you don't know who that person is, Make sure you go to the main office and say, I, I need to know who my school counselor is and have that conversation with your school counselor, because what happens is they have so many strategies to be able to get you and that person to to talk. There are things that we have. Sometimes we we do lunch together. Um, we may have what's called a small group session, and that will just be where you and that person that, you know, you want to build this relationship skill that you talk. But I think it is very, very important that, and even if it's not your school counselor, if you find a trusting adult in your school building, if this is in school, because you know what, you didn't tell us if it was school, it could be in your neighborhood. Um, so find a trusted adult that you trust and say the same thing you just said to me. I'm having issues with this person. I really want us to get along. Could you be the person that go in between? And I promise you they will say yes. If they don't, my email is on the bottom of this presentation. And I will gladly come to your school and do it myself. Does that work for you? Yes. Okay. 
And just one other thing to remember is that sometimes when people don't like us or we feel like they don't like us, it's not a reflection on who we are. It's sometimes because they've got some things they're trying to work through too. Yeah. So you just remember that you work on you and that not everybody is going to like you and that's okay. And you're not going to like everybody and that's okay too. Yeah. The most important thing is that we try to show respect and sometimes showing respect is just not engaging with that person. Um, but I love what Miss Thomas said too. And I would be more than happy to come along with Miss Thomas as well. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? I love that question. Okay. So we are going to talk in, in our video, we discussed um, relationship skills in the school and they showed us that there is something called project-based or problem-based learning. So we're going to build relationship skills together and we are going to do a really quick um, problem-based learning activity together. It is so simple. So here is Lily. And this is a storybook about Lily. Hello, Lily. I'm Rhythm, a raindrop ready to dance with you in the rain. Did you notice how raindrops fall on rooftops and create peaceful melodies? You can wear your raincoat and boots, or you can use an umbrella so you won't get wet. This is incredible rhythm. Rainy days are truly special. So you have listened to a very short story about Lily and rhythm. So now you are going to work together to meet a common goal. And let's see this here. And we're going to switch it up a little bit because I lost my screen earlier. And if you can see this, this is our friend, Jam. And together, Jam, we notice that Jam has a problem. Anyone want to tell me what Jam's problem is? Anyone see what Jam's problem is? Jam looks a little underdressed right now. Jam has no clothes. Jam can't figure out, well, he has underclothes. Jam can't figure out what to wear in this weather. So together, we are going to find the right clothes for Jam to wear in this weather. And what would happen is if we were in a, in, in a group setting in, a, in school, the students would come together as a group. And the problem is Jam doesn't know what to wear in the weather. So together, they would put Jam's right clothes. So who can tell me? Something that Jam should be wearing. I will give you some hints. Jam's clothes look like PWCS logo colors. So what should Jam put on first? Or not first, but what should Jam wear? And again, you Jam, can come off me or, or in the chat. should wear a raincoat. Uh, have an umbrella. All right, so Jam should put on a raincoat. All right. There's Jam's raincoat. What else should Jam put on? Pants. Pants. Do we think these pants match Jam? No. No. What kind of pants do we think these are? Pajama pants. Oh, pajama pants. Mm -hmm. So could Jam wear them under his clothes or should we take Jam's pajama pants off? Take take his pants off. All right. That was a good guess. What else should Jam put on? Boots. Boots. Good job. And Jam is missing one other thing. Umbrella. Umbrella. Is Jam ready for the weather? 
in our melanin. He doesn't have to have on pants. No, I want the not according to our book. <laughs> not according to our little story. He's but like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> in real life, Jan would have on pants. I think you got you all did a Should wonderful it? job. Did Jam have a rain hat? Jam doesn't have a rain hat. We have a shirt, shorts, mm -hmm. sunglasses, uh, earmuffs, and gloves. But I think you guys did a good job. I think Jam is ready. Oh, hate us. I think Jam is ready. So now that we talked about, now that we talked about developing relationship skills at school, we are going to talk about what they look like, um, what what relationship skills look like in the home. So these are just a few things that you know I'm pretty sure you're already doing, and things that we can do in the home. Um, one, the first we talk about quality time, spending dedicated time with each child regularly engaging in activities that they enjoy um communication being able to have open and honest communication creates a safe space for students and allows them to express their thoughts and feelings um along with that communication again active listening being able to practice active listening um, by giving full attention to your student when they're speaking validating their emotions with follow-up questions. Sometimes that can mean, you know, putting our phone down. Sometimes that can mean not watching TV when they're talking to us, just showing them that at that moment, you know, what they're saying matters. Uh, establishing routines, C establishing daily routines for meals. It could be for bedtime, homework. Um, establishing routines provides stability and predictability, you know, for, for students. Um, another one is family meetings. Having family meetings to discuss their day, important topics, resolving conflicts, and sometimes it could even mean um, making decisions together. What are we eating for dinner? Um, little things like that. Sharing activities, participating in shared activities. They could be whatever your family loves. Um, shared activities create a time that builds bonds and lasting memories. It could be cooking. The shared activity could be watching a movie. The shared activity could be, you know, as the weather gets warmer, it could be walking. Um, just doing something as a family, um, again, like I said, creates those bonds and those, those lasting memories. Showing affection. That affection could be through love. I mean, through love, it could be hugs, kisses, um, verbal expression, encouragement. You did such a great job today. I am so very proud of you. Um, it could be something as small as they, you know, they improved a grade, you know, making sure that you show them that verbal affection. Um, sometimes we 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 forget that verb that affection isn't just physical, but it's also you know words of encouragement. Uh, setting boundaries, clear and age appropriate boundaries, um, often promote respect, responsibility, and you know cooperation within the family. Um, leading by example, modeling those positive behaviors. Um, last last month we talked about. Um, self and social awareness. That could be just showing kindness, showing empathy, um, being honest um, in our everyday interactions. And the last one, which is probably my favorite, celebrating achievements. It doesn't matter how small, because if it's big to them, it has to be big to us. So celebrate the milestones. Um, what it does is it boosts their confidence and their self-esteem. Um, so these are just some ways that we can develop those relationship skills in our home. Anyone have any questions about developing relationship skills in the home? All right. So 
everyday routines offer opportunities. They give our they give our children a sense of predictability um, and safety, and they also engage them in taking responsibility and making caring connections. But I know sometimes for me, they can also serve as our greatest challenge and are the most chaotic times of the day. Um, but that just becoming intentional and co-planning with your family matters. So those routines inc can include morning, um, after school, homework, cleanup, dinner, bed, um, and any other weekday or weekend routines. Simple activities, again, like family meals, bedtime routines, playtime. They offer um, opportunities for your child to practice their social emotional skills and also allows us as parents and get caregivers to practice our, um, our social emotional learning skills also. They allow children um, and students to express their thoughts and feelings it allows them a, a time to be able to practice those relationship skills as co communication, um, collaboration, and it it helps them see the, pers the perspective of the bigger picture. Uh, relationship skills are such an essential part of social emotional learning. They enable us to build those strong connections. They help us navigate ups and downs of relationships and they ultimately lead to happier, more fulfilling lives. Um, when students, and again, you know, like I've said before, social emotional learning skills are constant learning. It is not something that they learn as students, it's even something that as adults, we learn every single day. Um, but by developing these skills, we can become better friends, family members, and um, contributors to our world. Before we leave um, and before I end, I would like you to think about something you heard or learned today. And I want you to just take away um, or write down one thing that you're gonna take away. Um, a takeaway can be an idea, it can be a strategy, it can be a tool, it can be an action step, but just think about one thing you're gonna take away from relationship skills um let session while Miss Wines is getting our word cloud together. And think about what you're gonna do next. It could be something as easy as, you know what? My kids and I haven't spent time together. We're gonna do that this week. Miss Boyd. She said she learned that uh she needs to learn to set limits for everything that she does. I love that. That's great. Boundaries are hard. Ba Boundaries are hard. So that's a great takeaway. So I am going to just share this one last thing. Um, I know Mrs. Boyd sends out a, um, a link to the presentation. Um, on that link, there are various activities. We have 20 family bonding activities that are there. Um, that is in English and in Spanish. We have some, you know, activities to do at home. We even have a SEL for parents video. And if you have your phone, what you'll see on the screen is another phone. <laughs> and that is to our social emotional learning page. And that also has a list of just various um, tools and resources that you as a parent or caregiver are able to to utilize. So I'm going to stop sharing so Miss Miss Wines can share. Okay. Well, I was going to say we do I'm sorry, we do have a couple of questions, questions. in the chat. Yeah. Okay. So um the first one is um how would you teach importance of choosing friends to a middle schooler and you may disagree with the choice of friends and how do you convey it to your preteen? Um, my, my assumption is the parent or caregiver is trying to teach importance of choosing friends to their student is how I'm reading this. Yes. That's how, okay. So I think, I mean, I think the biggest thing is, is having a conversation about what does friendship look like to your student, right? Because 
at, at the middle school age, it, it's different. And our emotions <laughs> drive a lot. <laughs> I mean, I can't. The emotions drive a lot. So my first question would be, what what does it look like to you? Tell tell me what being a good friend looks like to you. Um, and then I would also list, you know, as a as a parent or caregiver, for my friends, think about my friends. What do they look like? You know, what are attributes that they have? You know, can you do you notice if any of your friends have that? You know, one thing I will say is that it is you can't really choose your your child's friends, right? That is a learning experience that they have to go through. Um, but I think just fostering that relationship, I think having a conversation with them and just being open and honest about what well, here's what friendship looks like to me um, is, is the best way to be able to um, teach them the importance of, of choosing friends. Um, you may disagree with the choice of friends. How do you convey that to your preteen? Again, I think it's just a conversation. You know, you know, I don't really think this this is a great relationship. And here's why. Um, but it, it all starts with 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 the conversation. And I'm gonna hop in just for a second too. Vaughn, yes. uh, I'm sorry, Miss Thomas and I both worked in the middle school level, and it was probably for me, I know for sure my favorite. And we dealt with this a lot. Um, we both also have children, both have children that have gone through that preteen stage. And one of the things that I would encourage is to not make it a center of an argument for mm -hmm. your relationship with your child, give them some of that freedom. Um, but within boundaries, right? You know, create those boundaries in that space, but really trying to allow for them to express things and and having them be able to express to you why they really want to be that person's friend. What does that person provide mm -hmm. for them um, with, with friendship? Um, so I think, you know, try not to make that the center of an argument so you can continue your relationship with your child, Um because that is really important. I think that's a very good, I think that's a very good point. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm ready to share my screen. So I had hit um, make the word cloud, mm -hmm. but it's really cool. I want y'all to watch it. So I, I went back to edit it. So, okay, here we go. I'm gonna share my screen. I think I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, you guys ready? So these are all of their words when they think about families, right? Their family, right? All right, great. We're okay, ready. Here we go. Um, oh, I love that. So what you will notice is some of the words are bigger and some of them are smaller. The bigger words are the words that were used the most. So that means someone said love more than once someone said support more than once so you all um together collaborated this word cloud but these are the words that meant the most to you so love meant the most support meant the most and grace meant the most i love that thank you so much um miss wines for doing that and again this is something this was a free website that we found that, you know, you're able to go and, you know, do a quick word cloud with your family um, with some things that, you know, that you, that some words that you're, that mean, that mean something to you. I think I have a couple more questions. Um, can I go back to the previous slides regarding developing relationships? Yes, Miss Boyd, you send this. Do you send the slides out or do you make them available? Yes, I will send a follow up email to everyone who registered because we have many uh, people that register and for whatever reason are unable to attend. So I'll send a follow up email. I'll send the video recording and I'll send the resources along with that. Great. Thank there you so is much. a question in the chat. Um, it says. Um, uh, let's see. It says, how would you, oh, in what way can, um, let me see, they can mind it was for the comments. Um,
She says that her child mainly uh, speaks um, another language, and so this would be Spanish. And what are some ways that he can channel maybe trying to kind of uh, maneuver or, or kind of walk through that when it comes to relationship building at school? With with anyone would be my... Mm -hmm. okay. Um, so it doesn't affect him like in his um, academics um, and since he doesn't yeah. understand too much English. Okay. Well, that's a great question. I think there are, um, first I would, I would say again, trusted adult, right? Very important. Being able to be able to go to someone who also speaks their, his language or their language in the school building to say, you know, I want to make friends, but I don't speak, you know, English or, or very well. Can you, can you give me a buddy? There are so many times that we in the building would pair a student up with um, another student that speaks the same language as them, but also is bilingual who, who maybe speaks both the English and Spanish. Um, we also have, you know, some schools have various groups um, that students can, can join to make friends. So I would say, again, I think it is very key again, to have these relationships with our schools so that we can say, my child is having difficulty making friends because he doesn't, or they don't speak English. Is it possible you can pair them up with another student, um, would be the, the best way. It is very hard to put yourself out there, you know, even as someone who speaks English, it's hard to go out there and say, hey, be my friend, right? That's not, that's not easy. So, you know, my heart goes out to the child who feels like they can't, but again, find an adult in that school who they trust that they can, that even speaks the same language as them um, so that they can, they can pair them up. If not, find someone on the bus. You know, is there someone in the neighborhood that that student can, you know, engage with? Is there someone on the bus? Um, and, and things like that. Okay. Ms. Wines, do you have any other strategies? Right. And then again, again, we are serious when we say about the communication in the building. And if it and if it is something, because again, we did see ones. And what we're not going to do is go back and say, oh, this parent put a one, they're struggling with theirs. We're, we're not going to do that. But if it is truly a relationship communication thing that you're having issue with, that you're having with your school, please reach out. And if there's someone that we can connect you with in the building, if there's something that we can do to, um, to establish that relationship with you in the school, please, by all means, reach out to us. Um, so that, you know, that we can assist you with that. So thank you so much, Ms. Thomas and Ms. Wines for joining us tonight on um, this uh, relationship skill session. Um, as Ms., as I said earlier, and Ms. Vaughn also mentioned, I will be sending a follow-up email with the recording for tonight's session, as well as the PowerPoint presentation. So you will have access to the links. I have also, we have also put the survey link for this session tonight. We'd like your feedback on how we're all doing and any suggestions that you have for future programming. So thank you again, everyone, and have an amazing night. Enjoy your night. Thank you. Bye. I have a good one. Thank you.